Okay, so last time uh, we were creating journals, and we'll continue yes. the same. Okay. Okay, so creating journal. Let's do it. Ledger is your actuals. Okay, actual. What the company name is? Twitter. And they come in it. Let's take it as today's date. Again, remember this is part of a business process. So if you type with BP colon and journal, you will see accounting general event default definition, based on which it's going for approvals or not approvals, amounts, all those things. So I'll just take second of May, which is in this May uh, month itself. No worries. And the journal source, so I'd show you maintain journal sources. And from there, all the sources are coming here. Wherever you will tick accounting journal, that source will be appear here. And you can pick it up. So let's say manual journal here. Okay, memo, you can say anything. This is our second journal. And let's continue. Okay. By default, you get two lines here: one for debit, one for credit. But that's not the limitation. You can add more lines as many lines as you want. So I'll just keep a few random measure accounts here. Let's take cash. And let's take this powerful analysis. And as a simple example, it has to be a balanced journal. If it's not balanced, it will not allow you. Now the cost center has been marked up as mandatory here. So let's take any cost center for now. And after this activity, I'll show you how to create the cost centers and cost center directors. It's very easy. Let's take this one. So this journal has gone for approval based on the business process. And in the process history, you can see the BPNA accounting general event for which step also it has gone for approval, which is mentioned here. So let's approve this one and then we'll create the cost center and the general sources and then we'll see this related work tag usage also. So as I said in the beginning of the session, all actionable items for review, approval, taking some action comes into your inbox. So click on your inbox or tell us a serum inbox here. Approve. It's nine to five team posted. If you the process history, who has taken which action or approvals? You can see here, this was initiated by Adam Carlton. Accounting manager approval was not required as part of the PP. Then it went to your controller for approval. Now let's come back to the other part, how to create a cost center at cost center hierarchy. Just like company, company hierarchy, you can create a company hierarchy first, uh, sorry, cost center hierarchy first, and then cost center, anything is fine. So let's do it. So first let's create the cost center hierarchy. Type create cost center. Hierarchy. The task is pretty easy. Did cost center hierarchy. Reorganization was Twitter. Okay. Now, from which date this hierarchy will be available? We have mentioned is 01 0 1900 as same as our company hierarchy and company. Now let's give a cost center hierarchy name. Let's say Twitter. operations. We'll give it a name as TGO. We'll put the name. And remember, as we create the business objects, uh, we need to change the reference ID because it's useful when you create the data in bulk. 
or you want to link the data in bulk. Suppose you want to add thousand cost centers under this cost center ID. At that point of time, it's good if you have some code or reference IDs in place. Subtype would be a cost center. In company case, it is a company. Visibility, as I mentioned, everyone means everyone. Role assign means if I assign any roles here, that person only. Role assign your members, role assign your current and superior. So we'll say everyone here. I'll just copy this code again. DGO. Why are you why are you creating actually another hierarchy over here? We this have is created an that is not company hierarchy. This is cost center hierarchy. So what is the difference between cost center hierarchy and then? This is just to just because we are creating a another cost center, we are creating another hierarchy. No, 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 no. that was then, company. See, hmm. you work in a company which pays you. That is hmm. your company. But you hmm. must be working under emerging technologies, global operations, okay, oh. or as an S and P like so some some kind of division. So basically, okay, you are creating division under in one company. You can company call because... it as a division if you want to understand yeah, okay, the simple language. Kind of thing. Okay. Yeah, but if you see That's a service right. sweep also, there will be a cost center mentioned attached to it. Yes, that you belong yes. to this cost center, right? The same thing you are doing. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. In other terms, cost center is where the cost is getting impacted. Okay. Okay. You are dividing the cost. So what happens as I will tell you, I have worked in the operations, how it works. Let me just spend 30 seconds here. When you decide the budget for a company, okay, say you are the head of the family, okay, let's say you are the head of the family. Now, people will come to you, okay, kids will come to you, mama, where is our pocket money? We have this expensive, we need to buy this book, tablets, laptop, whatever, etc. right? You will say, okay, take thousand dollars. Now, your mother in law will come. What about my sarees and suits, right? <laughs> You'll say, okay, mama, take 10,000 rupees. And don't bug me anymore for one year now. So similarly, what happens in the operations world for any like company, any company, with any company, okay? Mm -hmm. The IT people will scream, okay? This year you're planning to hire a uh, boss, hundred guys, right? People. But what about mm -hmm. their laptop, the headset, and the great expenses? Mm -hmm. So I need, you know, one, one lakh US dollars. Mm -hmm. You said, okay, take it. Okay, I'll, I'll plan in, this in my budget. Then your operations people will come. Okay, what about the cleaning, <laughs> the building? Uh, washing is on all those expenses, right? You see, okay, you take another fifty thousand dollars, then your food and cafeteria person will come, operations person will come. That okay, what about running the cafeteria and all those, right? I need to provide food to your employees, so give me like another two like US dollars. You'll say, okay, two like US dollars, you know them in advance because you are hiring, you have targeting. So, whenever a company is running, they have a target in their head that okay, this year will target to hire like 50 more people in pipeline or 100 more folks, right? Per head. So that is the budget they have in advance. They know in advance that this is the target for next year. And similarly, your transportation department or some operation department will come to you, they will ask for the cost. Now, where this cost is coming? So you are earning by selling something to your customer, right? Then you're generating revenue also. And then you have forecast also. That, okay, in uh, one year from now, two years from now, next year, we'll earn that much revenue or we'll have that many customer database with us and we'll be earning this way. So you have a forecast and based on that forecast, you do your budgeting that, okay, for uh, getting this many customers, I need to spend on advertising. Okay. I need to spend on networking and all those meetings, dinners and lunches like that. So there are different divisions or cost centers, you can call it, who comes to you or you need to allocate the cost to them because from where they will okay. get the money, right? So as a head, as a CEO, CFO, that's a CFO world, they will divide the cost to different cost centers. Just like your service will have a cost center, emerging technologies. Now, emerging technology is just not like a cost center. It's also generating the revenue also for them, right? So this cost center has 100 people, part of emerging technologies who are working on workday. Now we need to spend more money on them because they're like packages, because we had targeting for 10 managers, 10 senior consultants. And as per the market center, this is like the package overall we have to offer plus minus 10, 50 lakhs or like whatever it is. So based on that, you get some cost. And if it is not utilized, good enough for the CFO, he will take it back. Okay. But that's hardly the case in operations. You're always under budget and you need more budget and you need more money from the CFOs. So that's a plan role of a CFO, dividing the cost, budgeting and forecasting, uh, working with numbers, playing the numbers. 
and this is the same thing okay so if i'm running an institute i'll create cost centers okay i can do uh, different custom machines also but i will create cost centers okay from this cost center how much i'm running how much i'm spending and so on then you can create you can tag this cost centers to transaction like customer versus supply versus then you can do a very high fi you know a very fascinating composite report to showing it to cfo ceos okay this is uh, the cost we are earning uh, this is the cost we are spending this is the amount we are earning taking these cost centers you can slice it as the data as in what, what you want but i hope the concept is clear now if it is not let me know yes yes it is clear actually the thing is that i got confused because it was written twitter global operations if you had written only global operations i would have understood it because i, I would have like related hai, yeah i would have related directly to branches or cost centers when you wrote actually twitter i got confused when, why are we creating another company it's okay that's what i ended up thinking yeah yeah, yeah. actually it happened but uh, just to make it unique because there may be a global okay. operation cost center already set up in the system by someone yeah. so to get rid of that i just added twitter there yeah. Okay, okay. Okay. Let's go ahead. Now we'll play the call center hierarchy. So as I said, but before that, we need to change their reference ID. So I had copied the code as TGO, and you will see a system generated code here, which will get rid of. Now we'll create a call center. Let's create two cost centers at least. Let's get Twitter salary. Twitter employees salary. Okay. T E S. Let's get that as cost center by default visibility is everyone as part of practice. So what happened here? What happened here? Ah, uh, somebody is going to try to fill up that. Let's add it. So cost center is also done. Cost center like is done. Okay. Now we'll talk about this related work that you saw. Like you saw on the journal, we were getting this cost center as mandatory, right? How to make something as mandatory, non-mandatory, and all those things. I'll just show you. So the task is maintain work tech usage. There are two things: maintain related work tech usage, which I'll show you later on. But first one is maintain work tech usage. So maintain work tech usage is for your transactions. Whatever you create, like journals, customer invoice, supplier invoice, any other thing, any other transaction, for that we can mark some work text as mandatory and non-mandatory. Okay. Uh -huh. So let's go ahead, and as you can see on the accounting journal, cost center is marked as mandatory. Right now, if you want to make something else also as mandatory or this as a non-mandatory, how do you do this? You go to this edit work text usage. And this is a part of your interview question, guys. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sometimes people do ask like, how do you make a work tech as mandatory and non-mandatory? This is the way. So I'll just take it off for now. That I don't want to make it a mandatory one. Here, you, another point is good point is how many you can mark as primary work tag. Okay. Now primary work tags come in the same room in a separate field. Okay. Where is this additional work tag comes in one single field? I'll show you the difference. Let's add something here. Let's add uh, channel or uh, something else. Let's say division. Okay, let me get rid of division from here. Let me add division here. Okay, 
and I'll mark the division as mandatory for now. That it was cost center. Now I'm marking division as mandatory. So I'll hit here. Now we'll go to create journal. Again. So is that is that does that mean that when we create journal, the cost center is compulsory? No, no. Right now, what I said is division would be mandatory or compulsory if I'll create a journal. Mm. So let's yes. go to a create journal now. So division is mandatory now. Cost center is not mandatory now. Earlier, if you remember, it was an asterisk sign there. Mm -hmm. Just before the call center, which is not there now. And by primary work tech means they will come in a separate column here, like division, like location, like call center. In additional work text, whatever we had mentioned there, they will appear. Got it? Like all these things mm -hmm. were mentioned there. So this is the basically play of your uh, work tech usage. Now related work tech usage, something on, on this business objects, on this business object, maintain work tech usage is something for your transactions. Maintain related work tech usage is for your, what you call them, your business objects, like company, cost center, on that you can make something as mandatory and non mandatory, but almost same. Here we make uh, things mandatory on transactions. In maintain related work tech usage, you make things uh, mandatory, non mandatory for your business objects. That's all. Now I'll hit submit here because I have already given division here. So it will just go ahead and again, maybe to go for terrace and for review and approval. It was not required, that's good. Now we'll see another examples of journals. Because, oh, because I have logged in as Teresa Serrano only, that's why it got auto approved. Okay, because you were directly doing from yes. her ID, it got auto approved. Yes, exactly. If I log in the same person as approver and create the transaction also, then the tran this is work the functionality. So, so in, in workday, in workday also there would be restrictions like the approver cannot prepare journals we, like we, SAP. We can do that. We can do that. In oh, the security, we can restrict the users. Yes. Okay. We can on the BP also we can do that. Yeah. There are many, in the BP, but, business but, process. Yeah. Yes, exactly. It's not the initiator; it's the same person. There are many steps over there which you can create. Mm -hmm. True. And send it also. I create the teams, and accordingly we can assign the. Yes, exactly. That's right. Now let's just see more examples here. Okay. Uh, now I'll record a quantity on this journal. Okay. How it works like this. Now you see here, this column has been added, which was not there earlier, this quantity column. Normally I have not seen, I'll be very honest. Normally I have not seen companies using it in their like month end journals or cool journals or some other adjustment journals. But uh, this is the functionality I just want to show you. This is FYI only, but hardly you will see someone using this very frequently or uh, on average basis also. But we'll see the usage of this. It's nothing just like you create customer invoice or supply invoice, you give a quantity there. Same thing, nothing new. For creating a journal, uh, earlier you are telling like for the create, uh, these all are the standard, uh, what to say? Standard examples? Uh, not example, it's a standard. Um, like uh, for every ERP, we have a, some uh, global standard template and then we can add our dimensions accordingly. General, right? temp general template you're talking about. General right? template, we, yeah. We do have that. We'll talk about that. Okay. Right on the showing the few functionalities of create journal. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. and then we can talk about this like we can add our dimension as per our requirements right yes there is a template and okay. in customer supply we'll talk about this a lot okay yeah okay now let's give it quantity here let's say but again that has to match so let's say 10 quantities unit of measure is each So let's go to box, anything that's like anything that's it and also okay, what else is pending here? Yes, division. Division is pending. This division is marked as as the mandatory one. I'll show you one more example and then we'll talk about the template service. And today also we'll talk about the EIB part. How to create the journals from EIB, like okay. mass creation of the or bulk creation of journals. Now I'll just submit here. Let's see. And yeah, just we got an error here. Unless it is balanced. Ah, uh, it's my bad. My bad, my bad, my bad. Let's see one multi currency general example also. Mm-hmm. And then we'll talk about the recurring journal template. So, let's see. see, after like few chapters, it's like fun. And you try to learn more and more on daily basis. I will see a multi currency generally, enable multi currency, right? The moment you select this, you'll open this uh, currency rate type also. And here we'll say the currency rate type is current rate, which is today's rate. Okay. And I'll just hit continue here. So ledger account, again, I'll set something here. Cash. Okay. Now, here, it's giving the currency option. If I want to have a GBP here, put down. Okay. The ledger currency is USD. Remember, ledger means the company currency. Now, yes. the conversion rate is 1.26. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, it has converted this thousand pounds into dollars. And when you will convert that as per the current conversion rate, currency exchange rate stored in the system, the amount comes as 1263.42 in US dollars. So I'm creating, I'm posting a thousand pound journal, but when the system is calculating and converting that, it's showing the debit and credit amount as 1263.42 US dollars. Okay. So which, mm-hmm. so which one is the local currency? This one is the local currency, 1263. USD. USD. So the amount, if I pull the TV, I can see the local one, 1263. Yes. Because that company is created in the USD currency. Because, yes. Okay. We'll, we'll see that report also. Yeah. Okay. In a few minutes from now. Mm-hmm. When we are doing the uh, like this in this particular journal, you have created, uh, you have both the lines are in GBP currency, right? Now. Right. If I want, like we are choosing the multi currency, and can I put a line in GBP and the another line in USD or per se euro or anything? But it has to match. Huh, it will have to match for sure. Mm-hmm. Then we can try this. Oh, it got refresh. Okay. Let's try this. Yeah, because my one of my so ERPs that I had worked on that used to allow us to do that thing. Mm-hmm. We in one journal we can use multi currencies. Mm-hmm. So we never used to pass in one currency, like we can use GBP, Euro, uh, AED and all that. 
so i would i just wanted to check that that's too bad okay now let's enter this line as gb oh sorry so let's account here ledger account One thousand. Okay. Now let's take another ledger account here. First, let's select the ledger accounts. Now you want to make this as GBP, right? Let's make one line. Yes. Okay. Now, what second line you want to make? Let's make it USD only. And let's take thousand dollars. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you see here. Because this is no, thousand. We will no. We will not be able to take it as uh, thousand. When we are putting the credit amount over here, no, we will have to put one two six three point four two. Then only it will take the corresponding amount as this. What do you think? Is it is it correct? Like then, if it is the case, then why don't we select a different currency here? What is like business no. cases for to understand? No, 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 no. See, my purpose is that debit and credit amount were like you know what this is the debit amount and credit amount. It is showing the base currency. This uh, like I wanted to know whether the ledger debit amount and uh, ledger credit amount was showing the same currency or not. We like when we were trying to hit the banks. Generally, what happens if you are trying to hit the uh, directly the bank accounts? Okay, you cannot change the currencies there. Okay, there could be many banks in a company, right? USD, AUD, uh, GBP, Euro, and all that. You never can uh, change the currency of a bank account. You will have to the currencies as such. You will have to use that only. Now, in that case, how you are doing? That's what I wanted to know here. So, uh, in such cases, what happens? Let's assume we are trying to debit our bank with thousand euros or thousand GBP like here, and we are wanting to credit our client or credit one of these accounts, some any of these accounts, uh, per se accruals or something, and we are trying to hit that account in USD because that's my local currency thing. Because I cannot hit my accruals or banks like banks in any other currency, I have to use the main currency, the bank currency only. And when I am trying to use a accrual or any prepaid or anything, then I am using the local currency of the company. So in that case, how it will happen? Will it happen or not? That's what I wanted to check. Yeah. But this is happening. So yeah, it's matching. See, it's matching now. It's balanced. So if we can so it will, it will right? allow. Yes, yes. Let me put division yeah. there. Now let me submit. Now, so it has allowed us to submit because you put yes, a balance. Yes, it is allowing us. Okay. Now we have seen enough examples of creating manual journals. So let's say uh, create like a journal template. Just type journal template. So we have something called create a recurring journal template. Suppose you post journals on monthly basis, okay, and your work tax is fixed, your information is fixed, and all those things. For that, there's something called create recurring journal template. Okay. Yeah. So that just is again put up. This is for accruals, depreciation, depreciations, and sort of things, right? No, no, not depreciation. This is like suppose Bulk, yeah. you post something on monthly basis. You have fixed details. That okay? Yeah, like accruals, prepaid expenses, mm, and like ha, for ha, one ha. year it stays almost same. Sometimes what happens if you have done some kind of adjustment in the asset ledger and something, then you particularly go on putting that entry in for particular one year. Yes, it's kind of yes. Now we'll give it a name. So we'll say Twitter participant journals. Something like template start date. Let's say from first of May. Okay, 
if you end on 0, 04, 0, 01, only. Then the source in this would be a manual one. Okay. If you want to put something like this, okay. generate once per frequency by a period, period by monthly. Okay. And then I'll just say 1000 cash. Let's say a thousand dollars. Let's give division as monetary value there. CPG. Let me want to add it this. Let's come to this now. Once the template is ready on the template option, you can say add it or generate new journal. So if you click on the generate new journal. Okay. So on every first of May uh, month till April first, uh, it will create a journal. Okay. Right now, if you see it's done, uh, status history. On behalf of this, it's done. Now we can schedule this. This one create recurring journal template task. This is what we have done. Yes. Okay. The recurring journal generation. Huh? This is the recurring journal generation. Yes. Journal has been created. Let's see. This was the work type which we had selected. The period is June. So it has created the journal for June period. Mm. That's how you can create them in monthly basis. So everyone, every month we need to um, schedule it or it will it it, it is scheduled till. Should you look three? Yes. Three, okay. The benefit is like, suppose this is just two lines, but mm -hmm. in many companies, there are many work tags. Okay. And that's already time consuming activity. You have mm -hmm. different lines also for some okay. companies, for some reasons. Yeah. So for that, in that case, it's very useful. So you, instead of doing manual it one by one, adding more the lines, mm -hmm. you create this template once, and yeah. then you go with this task and then just mention the period and mm -hmm. it will create it. So like five second, 10 second job only. Okay. Where okay. did we mention the uh, like uh, end date for this uh, JV? No, there is no uh, the template has an end date, not the journal. Journal will have a period only. I think okay, the uh, journal had a end has a end date till when? Mm -hmm. uh, this journal template is like till April next year. So it is. So a where did you mention that? 
the earlier yeah. one it's a scheduler which uh, we schedule it to run it every first day of the month to post right yes and the earlier one he was explaining us to create the journal the first one is was like the creating the journal yeah. template right? right and then we gave a range that okay from 1st of may till Correct. april next year okay in between okay. whatever period i'll give like suppose next time i want to give uh, july so it will okay. create the journal for july okay okay so it's easier that we like sometimes what happens we have to for Three months or two, five months, we have certain JVs. So for that, if mm. we need a recurring yeah. JVs, we can directly set a range for them, and they will automatically get posted. No, and no. If, if first we create it and we put the range that for the five months, it that journal will be activated, and yes. then we will schedule it for which day of the month it needs to be posted. So this yeah, one yeah, is the schedule. Yeah, that yeah. Uh, that one I understood. And also when we want to want this to be. On auto reverse also, that reversing thing can also yes, be ticked out. Correct. Create yes, reversal that, that particular point. Okay. So it will create reversals also. Yeah. Okay. 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 Fine. Thank you. So this was about general generation and all those things. Now I'll show you the EIB part. Okay. And please stop me if it is getting heavy again for all of you. If you have to practice, just stop me there. So let's do this EIB part now. So we have something called create EIB. Okay, now this will take some time, and I think uh, EIB is sufficient enough for you because that is pretty much for accounting general manual journals we have. That we are trying to load the data in bulk or try to create three four journals in one go, different values, different amount. Okay, normally it happens when you do the uh, data migration. At that point of time, you use this template to load the journals for legacy system. The, the bulk board. loader. It's called bulk loader in Lean normally. What loader, or you can create an integration file also. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So we'll set We have to make it unique. Inbound. Inbound means. Bringing something inside the system in means in in the workday. Out means outside of workday. So don't get confused. In means inside workday. Out means outside of workday. Yeah. So which means something. that if we are uh, in me in means that we are uh, shifting to workday. So yes. Company is shifting to workday, which means uh, over here and outbound is if we are shifting from out uh, workday. So we are exporting data from outside of workday for some X Y Z reason. It doesn't have okay. to be like implementing a different legacy system or technology. Mm -hmm. It's like your own purpose. You need data okay. in bulk uh, from the system. That's why you also use the EIB okay. to export data. Okay. Once you do, do that, you will be come to uh, you come to general settings page automatically. Skip what this. E EIB full form. Is enterprise interface builder. So under get data, you have to select the template name. So we are creating accounting journal. So we'll say accounting journal here. Mm -hmm. And then we'll click next. Just quickly, I'll just fill the details and I'll share this information with you. Let me just quickly change some parameters here. This. Now, this explain what these columns are. Yes. Let's go back. Let's say control H. Let's this is like uh, some of the community. I just copied this to save some time. I just say control one. So let's do this. Now, the first two rows are saying debit and credit. It means this is only one journal because every journal will have two lines, right? Mm -hmm. So this is showing us debit and credit. One one means first journal. Two two means second journal, third means third journal. Okay, add only means adding the journal into the system. 
like submitting this into the system. We are saying yes. If you want to update some existing value, you would select N here. But as we are creating new journal, we will say Y here. Then auto complete means auto complete the business process. Don't wait for us to say, okay, submit again, start proxy and do all those things. So auto complete. Submit is our submit. When we click on submit, it goes to next page, right? Same thing. Sure. These are the only information you need. Then why? Then you will go to the next thing here. Then in company column, as you can see, it's marked as a mystic sign here. So you have to put the reference ID here. TW101 is the company reference ID. Currency for this company is US dollars. If you want to use a different currency, you can do it. Ledger type is actuals. This is the reference ID of ledger type actuals. The accounting date on which date you want to post the journal. Journal source, manual journal, right? Mm -hmm. And memo, just to mark it like EIB1, EIB2, EIB3. Then row ID, because every journal will have two lines, debit and credit. So row number one, row number two. Okay. And we have selected the ledger accounts here. Then we have given the debit amounts, credit amounts here. Very simple. Only few things you need. Okay. Press control S. This is submit accounting journal four. Now we'll go here and we have to say launch integration. Then we have to get Twitter. Organization don't give anything. Run frequency, run now. You can select tomorrow, after tomorrow, whatever you want. But we'll say run now. Now we'll select the this integration attachment. We'll select the attachment from our right. Very easy actually. Once you start working on it, you will love it. Submit accounting channel four. That's our EAB. Loaded. Okay. Very easy. Now, first time when you load any EIB, it's like even if you have 10 years of experience, always go with this option. Validate only means first of all, just check the data if it is correct or not. Don't directly submit this into the system. Hit OK here. Refresh. Refresh. Fresh. Welcome to know if it is correct or not. Looks good. One error is there, so which is good. Let's see what is there. Errors are good. Errors only teach us like how to do things. What is the mistake we have done? Division. Ah. Uh, Close this. So we'll get rid of division first. So we'll open this, uh, or we can go here only. We'll change of the usage. And I hope this time it works. Once we just go here. So using find journals, we just search the journals that we have submitted. As you can see, we have all the journals here, and you will see also. These are the amounts, remember? 45, 45, 45. Yes. And to just confirm, this is the EU. Then one is the journal. That's how you load the journals, and it's very easy, very easy to learn. 